Welcome back. The federal grand jury investigating former President Trump's alleged election interference is expected to convene today. With us now, Donia Perry. She is a former prosecutor with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York and is also now representing Michael Cohen in a civil case against Donald Trump. Donia, welcome. Good to have you. So let's start because you've been both a prosecutor and a defense attorney now. You've done both. But I want to start with this February 2020 meeting. How does Jack Smith use this to establish intent to establish that Trump knew that there was no fraud. Well, I want to begin, I think, with a prefatory note that while Jack Smith will have to prove intent, will have to prove the former president's state of mind, and will have to prove that he knew what he was doing was wrong and that he was perpetrating a fraud, that doesn't really translate to a requirement that he prove that the former president actually believed that the election was stolen. Having said that, it will be useful for him to prove that, or at least to disprove Trump's inevitable defense that he believed and continues to believe that the election was in fact rigged and stolen from him. So proof that in the months, weeks, and days before the election and before January 6th, that the president was not only aware that this election was, as the, the Department of Homeland Security said, the most secure in history, but that he believed that and he, he praised those efforts it, it's to the point that he wanted to hold a press conference to be able to take credit for it. So it does show that consistent with what most of his advisors and lawyers and campaign aides were telling him that there in fact was no fraud and that he had lost the election. So it's all of a piece and it does go to, I think, an issue that will have some jury appeal, that it will be important for the jury to understand that he knew the whole time that the election was not stolen, that it had in fact gone to President Biden, and that he was just trying to overturn the results so that he could stay in power. But Donna, you one imagine more note that there. I, I would just say that you would imagine oh, that if sorry. it got in front of a jury, that Trump's defense team might say, yeah, maybe he believed that then, but perhaps he changed his mind as he learned more. I mean, help me understand the defense case of this. I want you to put on your sort of your defense trial hat here. What's the defense? That is absolutely correct. They'll say, okay, in February of 2020, he was given this briefing in the Oval Office and he thought it looked great. But then as, as the situation unfolded, he came to believe that in fact, it was not secure. They can certainly say that, but what will be useful for the special counsel here is to show this through line that beginning as early as, you know, early 2020 and going, you know, going throughout as a thread that the president at the time was being told that, in fact, there, there were no problems, there was no demonstrable fraud, certainly none that could have overturned the, the results of the election. So it's a pattern, and it shows from relatively early on and from shortly before he, made, he began to make false election claims that he was being told by people with authority that there were no problems with our election system. Tony Perry, great to have your insight today. Thank you.